We had our first uh, webinar on this topic on node hosting about six months ago, and a lot has happened since. So today, what we wanted to do is to provide an update on blockchain node engine, which is our blockchain node hosting offering. My name is Bertrand Portier. I am part of Google Cloud Customer Engineering and the principal for Google Cloud Digital Assets. I am a member of the Google Cloud for Web3 team. If you are in Web3, we want to enable you to build and scale faster with simple and secure tools and infrastructure. Nalin is our PM and is not able to join us today, so Sam and I are going to cover for him. And we have a special guest today, Ram. I'll pass it on to Sam and then Ram for their intros. Hey all, great to be here. My name is Sam. I'm also a customer engineer with the Web3 team. Uh, and I've been also working as a PM as well for the for the Web3 team as well. Doing a bit of a double duty here, but happy to be here to share a little bit more of the work that we're doing with Blockchain Node Engine. And I'll pass it on to Ram. Thanks, Bertrand. Thanks, Sam. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Ram Shanmugam. I am one of the founders and CEO of a company called Excel Chain. Uh, we are a, a customer of uh, the Google Blockchain Node Engine. And we built uh, an interesting uh, developer platform on top of BNE, and uh, look forward to sharing our journey with uh, BNE and uh, showing a little bit of demo, etc. Today, thanks, Bertrand. Over to you. Thank you, Ram. So just give a little bit of orientation for for today's session. Uh, I'll quickly recap what BNE is, and then uh, Sam will do a demo, and then uh, Ram is going to take her through how. They have used a BNE, and we, we show also a cool demo there. And then uh, we'll cover a little bit of uh, the future of BNE and go through the uh, Q&A session. The blockchain node engine, if you're not familiar with it, it offers a streamlined blockchain node hosting experience for Web3 developers. So there are three things about it uh, that you get. Number one, you get the benefits of uh, self-hosted dedicated nodes without the operational headaches. Number two, you get predictable pricing. So it's $500 a month, for, for example, for an Ethereum full node, and $2,000 a month for an Ethereum archive node. And that's for a dedicated node. And then number three, right, it's an enterprise credit offering. You, you get Google's uh, security, performance, and reliability. So just in case of if you want to go through what is BNE, right, it's a fully managed, dedicated, multi-chain RPC node as a service. So we can go through what that means a little bit for, for the, uh, the each of these components. So fully managed, so we at Google Cloud, we take care of the uh, upgrades and uptime availability. Uh, you don't have to do that. You don't have to have a dedicated team for that. Uh, dedicated, you get your own node, but it is not a a shared um, node like you could get from other providers. And you can get a choice of regions where you want to deploy that node. Uh, Multi-chain, so we have Ethereum today in GA. We have a Polygon and Private Preview and more coming. We'll talk about this in the future. We support use cases like um, relaying transactions, reading uh, reading uh, data or writing data to the blockchain via RPC and also WebSockets. By the once you have your node up and running, you, you can use the protocols uh, APIs via RPC or WebSockets. And then it's the node as a survey. Sam will show you this, but you 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 deploy your nodes using the APIs, common line interface or so that was just a very quick recap of what BNE is, and uh, then there is which provide more information and uh, documentation as needed. And now, what I will do is that turn over to Sam to do the demo. I'll just give you guys a very brief demo here of how Blockchain Node Engine works, particularly about the UI to create new nodes. And I think this is interesting because last time that we demoed this. The UI wasn't ready yet, and we didn't have support for Polygon, which is now uh, under preview as well. So I'll show you how to create nodes here. I don't think we have to go through the process of querying a new node, but I want to show how to create a new node 
and how you could use, for example, the Ethereum node in um, your developer setup in the case, for example, of spinning up a validator. So let me go ahead and share my screen over here. One second. So this is the um, blockchain node engine UI. We have a few nodes that have been created before, so nodes that are getting deleted as well. Then you click on create, and this is the UI that you basically can spin up any node that you want. But I'm going to set this as test BNE node coffee and cloud. You can choose a blockchain type. So we have Ethereum, we have Polygon now. I'm going to go ahead and create a Polygon node just to show you guys. You can choose a network. We either have mainnet or Mumbai testnet, the type of node, and then the the block producer or the validator client that you can choose as well. You can configure the network information. So where do you want this to be deployed? The regions that we currently support are US Central 1 in Iowa, Asia Pacific in Taiwan, and uh, Europe West 1 in Belgium. So I'm just going to choose US Central 1. You can choose to add any labels. I'm going to say BNE is awesome. These are basically just labels for your own record, and you can click on create, and the node, go, the node goes ahead and starts creating. This one is getting deleted, this one is getting created, and I currently have other nodes that are running as well. And I just want to show you how you would implement one of these nodes for any of the setups that you want. These nodes usually take a couple hours to create. Our sync time is pretty fast, especially for archive nodes. Let me just show you this as well. Let's say in the context of creating an Ethereum node, I'm going to create an ETH archive node coffee and cloud, which is a blockchain Ethereum, continue. You can choose the network. I'm going to go for mainnet. I'm going to choose to create an archive node. For archive uh, for archive nodes, we support Aragon and Lighthouse clients. Um, and I'm going to have the debug API, the, the debug namespace for, for, for my RPC calls. I want this node to be actually in Taiwan and uh, any labels, BNE is, Super awesome. And then I go ahead and create our archive node. Sync time is actually really, really good. This syncs in less than 24 hours. Uh, and again, it's a full archive node. Of course, we're not going to be watching the node sync for 24 hours. I just want to show you how you would implement one of these other nodes here. So let's first jump into the Polygon uh, node that I created. This gives me a list view. Uh, sharing some information about the node itself, right? So it has a node name, the status for the node, uh, the blockchain, the type of the node, and some more information that I created for the node. And it has the endpoints that you can query as well. So here we have the JSON RPC endpoint, the WebSocket endpoint, and the block producer client endpoint as well. For uh, for Ethereum, let's lay, take a look at the Goerli node. We have the same information, but we also have the Beacon API endpoint as well. And this Beacon API endpoint is helpful because you can then use this Beacon API endpoint in a validator setup if you wanted to. So this is what I want to show you here real quick. <clears throat> I just basically have a simple, a sample. Uh, so this is a, a command line. It's just like a simple VM that I have running on GCP just to show you uh, how you, how this would look like to actually, how, how would it look like to actually implement the Beacon API endpoint in a validator setup? So this is a sample service. Usually would run a validator through a service, but this is basically just a sample service showing you where the, the URL for the Beacon API endpoint would actually come into your setup. You can just grab this URL here, which is actually the exact URL that we're using. We're using this, we're using this node in a in a validator setup. So you would just basically grab the Beacon API endpoint, you copy it, and then you paste it into your service configuration. So we have two Beacon API endpoints from two blockchain or engine nodes configured to run with the actual validator. This is just a sample of scripts. You don't have our, you don't have the world that we have running here. You don't have any sort of information directly about the validator, but this is how it would look like. You would just paste it in here and you can paste as many uh, blockchain or engine instances and concatenate it as many as you want for your, for your validator node. And for every single blockchain or engine instance, you need a key. The key is not, I, I don't, I don't have the key here um, explicitly listed, but I can just basically share. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let me share this. These are the keys that you can create. So you can just basically share, you can basically create a new key. This creates an API key. And this is showing that this key. is your dedicated node, right? You can control exactly. access to your node. And then you can come here and restrict the key to whatever APIs you want. In this case, you can 
restrict the API key to blockchain node engine API key, you save it, and then this key for becomes your the key that you use to access blockchain node engine. You can just grab this key, copy it, and then you would add it here in the configuration in the key part of the configuration. So that's what I wanted to share. I just wanted to walk you through the process of creating a new node, creating a key, how the how the node view actually looks like, how, how you can actually see the endpoints of the node that you just created, and how you would go about actually implementing that key in that node in a setup, whether that is for your development space setup, whether that is for your application, or whether that is for a validator that you're running as well. And with that, I'll pass it on back to Bertrand. And, uh, Bertrand, yeah, take us from here. But that was that was a demo, right? Recap on BNE and demo of how to how to deploy nodes, right? And then get provide access to those nodes and use those. I will pass it on to Ram, who is going to to show us how his company has used the BNE. Thank you, Bertrand. Well, as I said, uh, Excel Chain uh, is a no code platform that enables developers and uh, enterprises to easily create Web3 applications and go through the entire flow from design, develop, test, validate, and then deploy on the various chains supported by Google BNE. Uh, to better describe what we do, I have a recorded video that I will use to show the key capabilities of the product. And then towards the end, we'll talk about how we are leveraging BNE. Now on login, what we're going to show is in five minutes how we can uh, essentially create an app and deploy on uh, BNE. Uh, on login, you can get to uh, our web interface. Uh, by the way, this is also available as a plugin to our uh, to your favorite IDE. In this case, we are creating a custom web app, Web3 app. We can also create a standard web apps that are already templatized. At this point, what we're doing is we are essentially describing the app we want to create. We have chosen to uh, create an app that will enable land records management, as an example. So the first step our platform does when you, when you describe your need requirement is to generate all the functions that are needed for that particular app. Uh, it leverages Google Palm to uh, essentially build the, those functions that are needed. And you as a user can then select the specific functions that are important for your specific app and then generate the contract code. Uh, while it's doing that, uh, I also want to highlight that uh, what we've done is we've taken Palm and essentially wrapped around with the governance risk and compliance wrapper. And what that does is ensures compatibility of the code we generate with the appropriate chain and ensure backwards compatibility and forward compatibility with the right versions and things like that. At this point, uh, what you see on the screen is the code contract, contract code has been generated. And the next step is essentially testing the critical functions. And uh, this is the equivalent of unit testing. Essentially, each function we test for both positive and negative uh, scenarios. By the way, all of this is automatically done, right? Now, once you sort of initiate the workflow, it automatically creates the test cases, validates it for you. And then that, and the final few steps are essentially uh, deploying the contract code. So the first step is obviously generating the right nodes. We have built the abstracted interface on top of BNE to essentially create the nodes. We can create everything that was shown previously can be done through this web interface. And in this case, we've initiated a node and deployed the contract on the um, node one, which was the uh, node we created on Google BNE. Now you can essentially see the contract has been deployed in the test net. And then the next step is essentially hooking this contract up to your Web2 interfaces. Uh, in this case, we've chosen to essentially create an uh, interface with the UI component. You can connect with other Web2 interfaces, and it's pretty robust and pretty exhaustive. Once we do that, then the last step is uh, different types of testing or validation. There are three types of validation we do. We do functional validation, we do system validation, and then we also do uh, uh, integration validation. And once all the validations are complete, your contract is ready to essentially be essentially go live. Everything we do here is auto-generated. There is very little human involvement. And this is happening real time, even though it, it is a recorded demo. Uh, in the interest of time, we have not 
chopped off any bits. It's literally real time that's running as we speak. So essentially what I want to take for you guys to take away is on top of BNE, now we have built a capability to essentially within minutes spin up an app, whether it's a templatized or custom and then deploy it. So I have a few slides that I want to kind of walk you through kind of the thesis behind building this. So we were developers uh, previously uh, and uh, we were building Web3 apps when we found that Web3 app building is uh, continues to be a challenge, right? And depending on the type of application you're creating, the time, the resource, the number of chains you need to build, uh, the risk and overhead of uh, building these apps continues to be a challenge. Um, if you go to the next slide, Bertrand. It, this only gets worse as you think about the number of chains that are available and number of tools that are available. And it's a mess. And particularly when you think about enterprises that are trying to adopt Web3, uh, they struggle with this complexity, uh, whether it's business teams trying to build Web3 apps uh, and how do developers quickly deliver the functionality, the manual effort in generating all these code and maintaining it. and trying to pull all these point tools together continues to be a challenge. So essentially what we said was, let's go and do this. And we'll talk about why we picked b &E in a second, but uh, uh, for us, when we thought about the Web3 ecosystem, that is both the standard Web3 apps, which is the native apps like NFT applications, DeFi applications, DAOs, et cetera, which are more prescriptive and you can be more like a pass there. And we have that capability, but what we saw in enterprise was, uh, varying degrees of application, whether it's supply chain, loyalty management, uh, financial settlements and processing. So the complexity multiplied significantly when we went to the enterprise and we wanted to build something that can straddle both uh, ends of the spectrum, standard as well as custom. And uh, we also did realize that the tooling required was not just for code generation, but also for testing, deployment and continuous lifecycle management. So that's essentially what we have uh, created here on Excel chain. Uh, next slide. I think now uh, if you think about the steps, uh, all of this is orchestrated on top of uh, the Google platform. And I'm using Google platform specifically because uh, it's intentionally because BNE is one component of what we use. We also use GCP infrastructure and we also use the Palm infrastructure. So we've integrated multiple components from Google into this platform. So whether it's design, validation, secure, uh, securing and so compliance management, as well as ongoing maintenance, all of that is uh, essentially built on top of Google. And when we look at, um, next slide, uh, Bertrand. Yeah, I think this is probably very relevant for those of you who are thinking about what infrastructure to build your Web3 app on. Uh, for us, there are three things we needed. One was uh, we wanted, we are automating the process. We wanted easy API driven interfaces to infrastructure provisioning and maintenance. Uh, which BNE provides. Obviously, when we talk to customers, we found that the range of L1, L2 chains they want to support continues to increase. So we wanted to work with a technology partner, infrastructure partner who can support multiple L1s, L2s. The second big component as our focus is, now we are developer friendly and developer focused, but a lot of our uh, customers tend to be enterprise in nature. And so they want, they are very concerned about risk and compliance. Um, and they wanted us to build our platform on a infrastructure where they can get dedicated nodes, uh, regional uh, compliance. So that we have some European customers who are looking at um, isolating their application in the region. And so we wanted a partner, infrastructure partner who can deliver that. And you know, enterprise grade is really, really relevant for us. The last component, which is super important for us, and I think as those of you who are building applications that go beyond just native Web3, need to think about Web2 feature sets as well. And uh, for us, it was important to connect our applications that we build on Web3 to Web2 interfaces and uh, GCP provided that capability for us, both from a Web2 perspective as well as from a common perspective. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity Bertrand and the team have provided for us to share our journey uh, on Google. And those of you who are interested in using our platform on top of uh, b and &E, uh, reach out to us. It's a, there's a, it's a, there's a free uh, user uh, access we provide to our platform and uh, happy to allow you uh, to try our product. Thank you so much, Ram. That was pretty cool, especially the demo. Love it. 
Thank you. Really, really nice. Thank you. So if you all have uh, questions for Ram or for us, uh, feel free to use the chat and all the uh, Q&A tool and we'll get to those at the end. And we can also do a live uh, interaction as well. You can, you, at that point, you can unmute and then we go through uh, the session. Okay, let's, let's keep uh, moving here. And uh, I'm going to pass it on to Sam to talk a little bit about the future of BNE. So BNE is currently a uh, GA, uh, blockchain or engine when GA for, for Ethereum in June. Um, and we're going to have, we're going to be expanding uh, our chain support for to other chains. We're going to be expanding to Polygon, which is currently under preview. And we're going to be expanding to Solana by the end of the year as well. So Q4, we should be on Solana. <clears throat> But there's going to be a Solana node. We can address some of this Q&A afterwards, but happy to talk more about the, the Solana node that we that we have under development. The Polygon is currently under preview. If anyone watching this, uh, this Coffee and Cloud, this webinar, is interested in trying out our Solana, uh, sorry, our Polygon nodes, ping me. We'll be happy to add you to the private preview. And uh, for the folks who are interested in Solana, then definitely also reach out. Uh, we also have a Discord channel where we are taking some inbound for folks who are interested in any of the upcoming releases for, for blockchain node engine. And then a question for the audience here is what other chains would you like us to see supported in 2024? There's a bunch of, uh, there's a bunch of chains out there that we would like to spend coverage to. There's Optimism, there's Arbitrum, other Altus in the Ethereum ecosystem, other L1s like uh, Neo or Avalanche, or even some uh, non-EVM L1s like Aptos, Sui, even Cosmos as well could be something interesting for us to explore. So anything that you guys are interested in, just dump it in the chat. We're going to take like a, we're going to take a, a screenshot of the of the chat later on and pass it on to the rest of the engineering team as we plan which chains we're going to be supporting next year. Um, and one more thing is that we're also working quite closely to make it easier to run validator nodes on blockchain node engine. I was showing you. I was showing you how to plug in blockchain or engine into a validator setup. We're making this even easier and more, more usable. Uh, soon you're going to be able to specify the builder flag on blockchain or engine. So if you want to run your own MEV boost sidecar, you can pass that on to blockchain or engine and just use blockchain or engine in your validator setup. You can also specify the suggested few recipient in your blockchain or engine. You're going to be able to do that soon through the UI. And currently, every blockchain or engine has validator metrics. So if you connect your validators to a blockchain or engine instance and you pull up the Prometheus endpoint for that blockchain or engine instance, you will be able to see validators running against it and validator specific metrics like inclusion rates, attestation rates, attesters, block pr blocks produced, and so on and so forth. That is currently available with blockchain or engine. So if you're currently running validators against blockchain or engine, you can see all of those metrics. This is something that I'm particularly working very close with, uh, the validator use case for blockchain or engines. If this is something you're currently doing, or if this is something you're interested in doing for your organization, then definitely ping me. I'm more than excited to chat because uh, I'm working quite closely with the product team on this and leading a lot of these efforts. Yeah, this is kind of what the future of blockchain or engine holds. The future until the end of the year um, is very well defined and the future for validator use cases is also go quite well defined. But we're very curious to hear from, from, from the community, what other chains would you like us to see expand into in 2024? And I saw some comments coming through already. So we'll be compiling some of that feedback and relaying it to the product team. And now I'll pass it back to Bertrand. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. So before we get to the uh, live Q&A, uh, different topic from uh, Node Engine, but I wanted to to use a, a plug here. You may remember, right, that we did a Coffee and Cloud webinar on uh, the topic of blockchain analytics. Well, here I just wanted to provide a quick update uh, based on a blog post that we released uh, last week. So very, very relevant. So many customers are are like using this uh, feature and interesting about it. So quick recap, uh, starting in 2018, we, we have offered uh, crypto data sets as part of the BigQuery public data sets. And the value is that we have blockchain data that's already indexed and that can be queried uh, using SQL. Or you don't, you don't even have to run nodes to get access to the blockchain data, right? And uh, these are stored and made available free of charge and they are managed by the community. So these are the BigQuery public uh, data sets, right? So 
couple of things, right? Yes, I see some fans here. Couple of things for the updates, um, and they are here. Uh, number one, um, in addition to the community managed data set, we are now offering Google Cloud managed data sets as well. So these are enterprise grade for production use that support highly performant queries and uh, with a richer uh, data sets, for example, uh, related to specific tokens like C721 or others, and more precise data like uh, UINT256. Uh, you know, there were some uh, uh, issues with the uh, precision, right? Uh, and we have that now covered in those uh, Google Cloud managed data sets. Second thing, and uh, you can see that on the screen here, is that we we are adding uh, protocols or blockchains to the community managed data sets. And you see that the chains that uh, the 11 chains that are mentioned uh, in the blog, right? You see those uh, listed there, right? I wanted to, to give a plug here. I know this is of interest to many of you, uh, different from BNE, but uh, super important as well. Okay, now we are live into the Q and A uh, section. So let me just uh, let me just go back and yeah, thank you, Carlos. The uh, link here. Uh, let me just go back and see what we have here in the uh, Q&A tool. Well, it looks like we don't have uh, questions in the uh, Q&A tool here, so we're just going to use the chat. Well, let, let's just go back. Any plans for building a settlement node, for example, R3 Quadra or others which can be used for B2B transaction exchange? If maybe if you want to R3 Quadra, right, we, so we've got the, we've got Good feedback why you, so you're mentioning that R3 Corda would be useful for you as one of the supported blockchains in BNE. Right? We're going to take note of that. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, Sam, if we have any specifics or right if you want to expand on the uh, like settlement node, etc. B2B chains or B2B use cases or blockchains that are specialized in B2B um, transactions do keep coming up for us quite a bit. But the thing is that there's a few there's a few yeah there, there's just a few options so there's r3 hyperledger and a couple others that are specialized in b2b uh this is something that we're aware of we just haven't explored deeply but echoing bertrand point echoing bertrand's point uh this is interesting for us to take note of and and, and discuss with the broader team but uh again kind of what i said here there's no official plans on the roadmap yet beyond so on and polygon but it's definitely something that we're considering um as well but nothing nothing concrete it's just something that we're aware of and discussing with the team sure thanks Th thanks Raji, for the question we have a question uh, from sufian next regarding finality on the chain how many confirmations do you require before your node will show a confirmed transaction that's probably for Sam. So this is for ethereum i'm fairly sure um, it's just a, the normal 32 confirmations i would have to double check what is the confirmation heuristics that was implemented for polygon so i'll, I'll just have to double check on that and get back to you on it um is this something that is interesting to you for any particular reason is this is there any more context that you would like to share or you're just curious on on confirmation heuristics that were implemented here because if there's something like more to this i'll, I'll be i'll be interested to to know very cool Thanks for the question. Okay, next question from Yakov. How are nodes handled when they fall out of sync, or do they? And any other combinations of consensus slash execution plans planned, like Aragon or Prism? On those two things, so first, when nodes fall out of sync, all the node is fully managed for you, right? So this is something you don't have to worry about. The node, the node may have an error particularly, and then it will display in the UI, you will see that the node had a, a particular error, and then you can just basically reach out to the team for us to troubleshoot manually. But when it comes to normal updates, when say there's a client upgrade, when there is some sort of a bigger, some sort of fork that needs to be implemented, or even like normal uptime maintenance of making sure the node is up to date and then the node is synced, all of that is managed for you on your behalf. And when it comes to other, that's that's a, that's a beauty of a managed offering. It's something that you like, you set it and you forget it and it just works. It's kind of, it's magical. You spin it up and the node is there for you. You're on dedicated node, you don't have to worry about it. 
when it comes to combination of uh, clients, this is something we're exploring for next year. Um, as well, we don't have any particular clients that we have announced yet that we're going to be supporting, but this is something that we're definitely exploring for next year, especially as we think of making blockchain or engine more suitable as well to run validators. We know that client diversity is, is definitely top of mind for many validator operators. So this is something that we're definitely looking at for next year. I noted some of the suggestions here for client uh, combination of Aragon and Prism. Yeah, this is something that we can, we're definitely considering. And if you have any other suggestions of combinations of uh, execution and consensus client, then just let us know. We'll be noting those too. So thank you, Jakob, for that. And the next question is from uh, Francesco. Um, are there going to be rate limits on calls per second on the dedicated nodes? It's your own dedicated node, right? There is really no no rate limits. There is a soft limit capped at around, I believe it's 600 QPS, so 600 queries per second. That can be removed and that's only in place for you not to bring down your own node. But if you want to like go ham on your own node or you have some very high use case and you don't care about the node going down, then we can just lift that, we can lift that uh, artificial limit and then let you go hard at it, right? There is a soft limit, but it's mainly for you to not bring down to your, your own node. And I just want to highlight that I think this is one of the coolest things about blockchain on engine because we're not charging you by usage, right? So if you use your node for a few calls or if you use it for millions of calls or billions of calls a month, you're going to be paying the same flat price here. That's that's kind of one of the things that makes uh, blockchain or engine attractive for some workloads is that you're just paying a flat pricing for the infrastructure is a flat pricing a month and it doesn't matter how much you use it or not, it's always going to be the same price. You don't have any sort of a surprise bills if you if your usage of the node goes up, which I guess I'm assuming would be a good thing because it shows that your DAP that your application is having a higher usage. I think that's a that's a great thing. So no no surprise no surprise billings. It's just flat pricing all throughout. Very good, very good. And then uh, the next one is from Sufyan. Uh, are any nodes hosted in the US or are they international? So the nodes are supported in those three regions that I mentioned. So we have support for US Central 1, um, Asia West 1, I believe, uh, which is Taiwan, and we have supports for nodes in Belgium. So supports in the US, in, in Asia, in Asia, and also supports in, in Europe as well. We're expanding. It's, it's kind of funny because I just keep I, I keep asking for you guys' feedback, but this is actually important. We want to make sure that we're building the product that you guys want. Um, we're expanding to other regions next year too. It will be great to know which regions you would like to see some of these nodes in, given, of course, that we support the regions. Google Cloud, the Google Cloud Network has a very, very strong global support uh, for for regions and zones. So if there's any of those zones that are interesting to you, throw them in the chat and we'll, we'll relate into the team for sure. QAC. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we covered uh, all the questions and I, I don't see any more in the QA. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. I could be sure. Accession. Then that's for you, Ram. <laughs> Let me just uh, show you uh, a few things here and then uh, this will be posted along with the recording on the YouTube playlist. Let me just show you like uh, a few links. So there is a, a blog post, like a couple of blog posts, like where we talk about node hosting and BNE. And then there is a blockchain node engine has its own page also on Google Cloud. You can get access to a lot of uh, documentation there. Rams demo here, you, you will get the link to that, uh, the demo that we showed. And then uh, there is a link to the uh, blog post for the data sets. So that's what we wanted to cover today, folks. So thank you so much for your participations and big thank you to ram thank you for the uh the partnership and what you've built this is pretty amazing and then uh, we'll meet again in october oh we have a uh, links are going to be posted yes so we're gonna we're gonna post these links in the youtube uh, uh playlist so as part of the youtube recording you will get the links to those and then we can share the links as well right to all the uh people who registered but again, thank you all. It looks like that was helpful. That's great. Thank you for your participation. And we'll see you next month. Thank you.